Welcome along everybody, it is the second game of the day, England against Sweden and what a big game it is in Group A. Now is the time for one of these two to bring out the best of themselves in this final game of the group. Japan earlier put Morocco to the sword winning by four goals to nil, meaning that Japan have coasted to three wins out of three. Who will join them in second place? Morocco, well they cannot, Sweden could, England could. What simply has to happen is Sweden could draw and go through as in going into second place. England have to win because of their less superior goal difference. We'll go through the line that's very shortly, but before the action starts, we hear the national anthems of both England and Sweden. The national anthem of England. God save us. Done. We are ready to go for this big encounter here in Group A. Uh, Japan, we know one of the sides going to make the last four. Who will join them? Will it be Sweden or will it be England? As I mentioned about the permutations, Japan, of course, did beat Morocco 4 0. Comfortable winners, Hanashimatani and Fukushima, with both the goals as they put Morocco to the sword as they won by four goals to nil and then after this game we move on to the second round of matches in the men's tournament with groups A and group B taking shape. Well let's start off with the teams then starting with the hosts England yet to score a goal but perhaps against Morocco they should have felt like they should have taken all three points. Missing the penalty was Samantha Goff. She's in the lineup elsewhere. Katie Christopher starts in goal. Selena Prito, number two, is one of the four outfielders. Joining her in the lineup is Alice Hopkins, number five, and Vucia Vervantovic, the number seven, with the mention number nine. Samantha Goff, captain in the side. On the bench, it is Megan Briley, Natasha Mead, Ayman Hafiz, and Emma Stead. Michelle Wilcock is the England head coach, guided by Tony Larkin, who will be the on-pitch guide for the England attackers. Well, moving on to Sweden, they came off the back of a narrow 1-0 loss to Japan, so they do start this game slightly ahead of England in the standings, only by one place and have a slightly better goal difference. Mowa Bera is the goalkeeper and captain in the side. They then have in the lineup number six, Sofia Bustrom, number four, Lisa Lee, number nine, Victoria Carlson, and Alice Bernson is the number five with the substitutes then of Helena Tilin and Anna Nilsson, with the head coach being Mark Blake and the on-pitch guide being Eileen Rio. Well, it is, of course, the third round of matches in the women's tournament here at the World Games in Birmingham. The sunshine is starting to come out, a bit blustery a little bit, a bit cooler than what it was yesterday as the players stand for the 
photos from the photographers. There is a large crowd in attendance, to be fair. There's a lot of St George's flags flying around here in this stadium, as well as the general public, it looks like, as well, into support. With even the Morocco team over on the far left coming in to cast their eyes on the England and Sweden sides as they get a look at them. They have, of course, played the pair of them, getting a draw out of them both. Well, just before, of course, kick off the Sweden goalkeeper in that pink shirt, Moa Berha and Lisa, I'm oh, sorry, Alice Bertson over there with Samantha Goff and the, cap, and the England goalkeeper Katie Christophers as they sort of exchange the pendant to ignore the uh, game. Well, it is a huge game, this one, isn't it? It really is a case of winner takes all in terms of who finishes in second place. Japan have walked into top spot in this group. They have shown to be a real top dog who will join them in Sweden or England. And it certainly does feel like both of them that there is a little bit more to give. Sweden, of course, have scored in this tournament. England haven't, but both have got a point apiece in this group. Remember, Sweden's goal has come via an own goal from a Moroccan player. So they yet have not scored a goal from one of their own team yet, which is quite remarkable. What is a big, big game? Can England use the host crowd to their advantage here in Birmingham? And certainly there is a performance to give in this game. That is very much clear and very obvious bar in their first two games they could have ended up picking up three points against Morocco had Samantha Goff of course not missed out on the opportunity to score from eight meters it would have not seen a draw but would have seen a win for England who will get us underway they go from right to left in a kit very much the same as the Lionesses of course who wore the same strip that they beat Australia in yesterday. Congratulations to them on reaching the World Cup final when they play on Sunday against Spain. England in the sort of light blue shirt, light blue shorts and navy blue socks. Sweden in all yellow for this one. As they go from left to right, as we are about to see the first half get underway. Two officials just standing on the near side. They're just doing their final checks before they give the green light to go ahead. They're just shaking hands of some of the members of staff for both England and Sweden behind that sideboard on the near side. And what is a very, very important game in this group. Because as we know, if you finish second in Group B, you play the winners of Group A. If you finish second in Group A, you play the winners of Group B, which, as it stands, will be Argentina topping Group B. So one of these two could face one of the might of this tournament so far. In Argentina, potentially in the next round. Silence falls. You can feel that there is a lot of tension at, and get that sense there is a lot riding on this game. That certainly is the case. And away we go then. Huge game for both. There will be surely no quarters given. A lot on the line. A lot to gain for both England and for Sweden as Sweden look to come forward here with Erlis Bertson. He comes forward all alone inside the England half. Looking to maybe get a shot away. Selena Prieto can't quite get a grip of the ball. The ball is stationary at the moment. So as soon as there's a touch, then the ball will get moving again. Up there is Victoria Carlson. There's two England defenders, two Sweden defenders. The ball inside the England half of the pitch. Carlson gets a foot to it. We're back moving with the ball again. Benson there as well. Carlson's there. Does appear as though an eye mask is, or an eye protection has gone off. And the play will have to be stopped. 
And of course, just to warn you as well, if you are watching the live stream of this game, of course, the scoreboard is not up due to some technical difficulties. Hopefully that will get rectified and sorted out in the first half and before the end of this game. But don't worry, I will certainly be able to tell you the score and tell you the minutes on the board and how many fouls have been made in this game as it will be the first call of the game in Sweden's favour and it's taken 42 seconds for that to happen so it will be a corner for Sweden they are in all yellow with black numbers on the back of it no name on the back of the shirt as the shot comes in from the corner Benson with the shot it's now Colson who hits it Left hand side of the penalty area, real tight angle, was quite a bit away from the goal. Poked it towards Katie Christophers, but wide it goes. An underarm throw across the floor with the ball. Here is now Samantha Goff. She goes on. She's getting towards the 14 metre line. She's very close to it. Challenged by Lisa Lee. Here is now Samantha Goff. She's going to go over to the right side board and she bounces off it, comes back in field. She's dribbling away from it. Over the 14 metre line, over on the right side. She's about two or three metres away from it. Good play this by Samantha Goff. Is this going to lead to a shot? She's going to want to eventually get a shot away. She's been closed down by Victoria Carlson. She's away from her on her inside left. She leaves it for Alice Hopkins, does Samantha Goff. He's been very well closed down by Victoria Carlson on that near side. She's trying to get around it, but there is literally no room to do so. Hopkins is just having to touch it back in her own half. Colson has won it off her. And you have to say Colson's won that particular duel there as she's got her left foot to it, so she knows where the ball is now. She goes on, right-footed shot. Wide though by Colson. Selena Prieto quite happy to let her shoot. Very awkward position that she was in, to be fair, was Victoria Carlson when she was trying to get a shot away. She was a bit old way out as a big gust of wind comes in on the pitch and in the direction I'm in in the commentary position. Here's Goff, back to goal, 14 metres out. Carlson back it into it. She does get very tight to players, doesn't she? Does Victoria Carlson. As he stands in this group, just a little update. Sweden would move on to two points. They'd leapfrog Morocco with a better goal difference. Here's Samantha Goff, though. Still goes on. Just couldn't quite get into the penalty area. Just at the last moment, the ball just trapped under her foot. She still has it here, though. She's all alone up there. The only one in the Sweden off-field position in the penalty area. She goes and hits it wide. Very good work by Samantha Goff to carve the chance out for herself. Did very, very well. Isolated all alone up there. Got the shot away. Moa Berha was able to just see that one drift past her and not make a save as now Sweden are in possession just inside the England half of the pitch with Carlson, but doing well to stand up to her is Alice Hopkins has a real height difference there. Tony Carlson must be over six foot. Alice Hopkins must be less than six foot, so certainly there is a real battle there, but certainly in terms of build, Alice Hopkins is looking a little bit more physical than... Victoria Carlson, who does get the shot away from about 12 metres out. Will just trickle out a play for an England restart, which is thrown by Christophers. Will, quickness to it. She goes over to the far side with Samantha Goff. England captain, that red armband on her right sleeve. About 16 metres out, Lisa Lee tight to her. There's a very much a man-marking approach here by the Swedes out of possession. But it's a bright start by England, 11 minutes 12 seconds into the game. Goal is here in this Group A encounter. Remember, Japan were winners earlier against Morocco, which has opened the door for one of these sides to finish second. Sweden draw, second's theirs. England win, second is theirs. And there's a few chances of England from the stands on the far side. Good work here by Alice Benson, who goes on. Goes down, but Utsia Virvantovic. And Selena Prieto working in cohorts to allow the ball to run through to Katie Christopher's in a penalty area. Play carries on. Samantha Goff back up from the floor, looking to get the shot away. She's got a defender in front of her. She will shoot again. It's low. Moa Berhe with the save. Good save as well. 
Samantha Goff did just fire a shot towards goal, but she wasn't at all. Caught out cold by it. She was able to make the save as Sweden are able to get it away. England at the moment are the ones with all the pressure and doing the pushing. Here's now Alice Hopkins. Lisa Lee closing her down. As they look like they're just going to go over towards this right side. Good challenge though by Lisa Lee who will try and clear it. It's gone off the shin pad of Alice Hopkins. And she's managed to get the ball under control, keeping it at her feet. And Sweden are really struggling to clear the ball away. Just about away from their own half at the moment with Lisa Lee. And on the halfway line now is Samantha Goff. She goes on, trying to get away from Lisa Lee. But England, who are yet to score in their home championships, have been very, very close to doing so with Samantha Goff. So certainly real positive signs by England women here in this Line football tournament. Here is now Samantha Goff. On the way she goes into the penalty area. She just stumbles into the Sweden defender, Sofia Bustrom. And the ball will run through to Moa Berhi. The referee has raised her left arm. It does look as though that I think Lisa Lee did just catch Samantha Goff here. And there's an opportunity for England to take the lead. They've got themselves a chance here, have they, to try and get themselves in front. It doesn't appear as though there is a foul, beg your pardon. So, there he will just throw it out along the floor through the legs of Selena Prieto. And it will go straight through to Katie Christophers, who will then throw it towards the near side along the floor bounces off the sideboard Samantha Goff looking for it but she won't get near it and Anna Player will go for a goal kick timeout called as all the Sweden players go to their side the right side on the near side and on the left near side of the sideboard is where the England staff are behind it and where the England players on the pitch go England have had the chances they have been the more threatening team without a goal to show for it yet in this encounter as they get words from various coaching staff as the men's tournament gets back underway today after yesterday's action four games in total to come Thailand against Japan, Turkey against Italy, Argentina, England and China versus Germany in the four matches to come today. So we will get to see both the women and the men's of England playing today. Of the women here playing first and just under nine minutes remain of the first half. So we've played around sort of six minutes. It is England nil. Sweden nil in this game. And one goal scored between these three sides in this tournament. That was for Sweden when the Morocco goalkeeper fumbled a simple throw out by Mouwa Berhi in the opening game, which is actually the first goal of the Women's World Games tournament. 2023 here in Birmingham. There is now Alice Bertson using the boards to her advantage. Selena Prieto's intent on making her not turn her around. Utsia Vervantovic there for England, batting away against two Sweden players, and one just completely holds her off. That, of course, was Bertson. Victoria Colson then getting hold of the possession, driving on. Virvantovic trying her best to hold on to her. And Alice Hopkins has helped it out for a Sweden corner kick. The bottom of a sort of ponytail being a purple colour. With sort of white markings on a black outer protective mass. So it's a Sweden corner over on the near side right in front of me. 
Bernson and Carlson over there. Here's now Alice Bernson gets the shot away. Katie Christophers doesn't even need to dive. He doesn't even need to work up a sweat because the shot will just go into the side net in low on an near side. Now gone to Samantha Goff from the restart. Looking to carry on going. She is into the penalty area. But it's well defended by Sofia Bustrom, who just stands up well to Samantha Goff. Tony Larkin, the guy behind the goal, was possibly putting his arms up for a possible foul in there, but I think he was clutching at straws a little bit with that one. It's Victoria Carlson over the 14-metre line, creeping towards the penalty area. They're close to it, are Sweden, and Alice Benson is on the ball now. Towards the penalty area she goes, she stays on her feet, as honest as she can be. Alice Hopkins battling with her. Surely there's a foul in there. Nothing given. Referee says it was a 50-50. She lets the play carry on. There's Victoria Carlson and Victoria Carlson battling away. They're battling with each other as England get it away towards the near side. As Alice Hopkins did well, there has gone off. Selena Prieto and out for a Sweden corner. And Katie Christopher just brings Selena Prieto into position. Also Alice Hopkins. Just trying to reassure her, I think. She was a little bit kicking herself. It was Alice Hopkins about a little pass. She tried to play to Prieto, which bounced off of the England number two and out for a corner. So it will be a Sweden corner on the near side again, which they had just a few moments ago. Bjornsson and Carlson. The two over there again. Benson hits it. Again, it's the near side of Katie Christopher's goal, her left-hand side where it's gone up for a goal kick. And the referee just telling Alice Bernson to just maybe tie up her shoe a little bit tighter. And to just pull her sock up because the very top of her shin pad was just showing. Another timeout called. Not a lot happened so far since the last timeout. It is England nil, Sweden nil. Very much on the sort of probability scale of winning, it is very much 50-50. Not really a lot in terms of really anyone being the dominant team yet. Nil nil at the moment. And, but this is a game where winner takes all. Sweden win, they go second. England win, they go second. A win would be helpful for both. Draw doesn't help England. But what a draw does do for Sweden, it would take them into second place. As it would stand, of course, as you can see. Three wins out of three for Japan. Nine points, ten goals scored. Morocco came into this, two draws. Drew 1-0 with Sweden in our opener. Drew 0-0 with England. And then, of course, they were beaten 4-0. So their goal difference goes to minus four. Sweden are on minus one. England are on minus five goal difference. So, hence why Sweden... Uh, can afford a draw and can relax just a little bit more than England who of course as we know do need to win if they are to be finishing in second place as Natasha Mead is on the pitch now for England uh, she's replaced Alice Hopkins who makes way first change for either side in this game Everybody is in their positions on the pitch and the guides and we are now ready and set to go again. And of course, no scoreboard showing on the stream at the moment. So just to let you know, it is nil-nil. Just under seven minutes of this first half left to play. Here is Samantha Goff. Holds off the challenge of Lisa Lee. Now... Coming forward through the England midfield and into the middle third. She still goes on. She's away from Natasha Mead. But a heavy touch has seen the ball go to Vucia Virvantovic. Now Selena Prieto. She's trying to come forward, but Lisa Lee's there to win it for Sweden. A little bit of untidy touches and possession by both. Prieto. Coming with it. Carried the ball inside Sweden's half as she's not allowed to go towards the 14-metre line. A mask has come off, so the game will stop. 
when appropriate to the officials. Victoria Coulson's closing her down. She's holding on to the ball here. Left foot it is on it. The left arm is raised by the official on that right side, of course, emphasising the fact that, of course, they were holding on to it for a few seconds. You hold on to it for four seconds. Of course, it's automatically given as a foul against your side. So you have to try and move it and make sure the ball's not stationary. Here is now Samantha Goff from inside her own half. Now going into the Sweden half. It's a real bold run this by Samantha Goff. Goes on. Was she blocked off by Sofia Busturum who stops her again? And uh, won't be a foul. It was very good defending indeed. That's the second time Samantha Goff has been stopped by the Sweden defender, the number six, Sofia Busturum. Last line of defence. And it was defended very well by Busturum. No doubt her goalkeeper behind her in the pink shirt. Moa Berhi is very appreciative and certainly will be probably giving a bit of a tap on the back as the scoreboard is up. On the live stream, just over five to go. England nil, Sweden nil. As the ball is thrown out towards Lisa Lee. She's inside the England penalty area. She goes down. Can she get herself back up? She gets the shot away and Katie Christophers denies it. Saved well by the England goalkeeper. She... Got down in a low position, her arms were stretched out. She bent down as well, and it was a decent save by the England number 13 in all green. And that's the first shot on target that Sweden have mustered up in this first half. They've got themselves another corner. A lot of them have been taken on the near side as the opportunity is shown again from... Benson, whose shot was saved by Katie Christophers, and ball is bounced off the sideboard. It is stationary. Vucia Virvantovic is trying to work out where it is. Lisa Lee trying to make it difficult for her. She's inside her own penalty area, Virvantovic, but she comes away from there. Good work by the England number seven. Here is now Samantha Goff. She's dribbled quite a fair old way already. She's not going to be stopped by Booster. Here is she. She goes into the penalty area. And just as she was trying to swing a shot towards goal, Moa Berhi inside her own area to the right of it in that very small box where she could only be in. Is there to just pick up the loose ball and not allow Goff to get a shot towards goal. Here's now Carlson battling with Natasha Mead. Mead there and winning the ball. Referee right behind Victoria Carlson and Natasha Mead who are battling at each other, Coulson's come away from it, won it against Mead, she's away from Prieto, she's just inside the penalty area. Difficult shot to get right, as it has gone wide. Uh, Sweden plan a substitution here, in the final four minutes of this first half. Sofia Bustrum is to be replaced. That's uh, the number seven, Helena Tilin is going to come on and be their first substitution of the game. Of course, England did make a first half sub as Natasha Mead was on in place of Alice Hopkins. But we're coming up to 45 minutes of football, so two and a half games of football. And England still yet to find the back of the net on home soil. And what is their home championships? There is St George's flags in the crowd. There is a St George's flag hung up on the railing with the England football badge in the middle of it. Blue right in England just below it as well on the St George's type flag. Carlson battling with Natasha Mee. She's away from her. She's found herself in quite advanced positions as Carlson. She gets herself into the penalty area. Prieto holding her off. Irvantovic is there. She gets a touch to it. Just knocks it to Katie Christophers who will then just send it and clear it away with her foot towards now Samantha Goff back to goal about 14 metres out she's dribbling away she's trying to get away from Lisa Lee who isn't quite pulling on her holding on to her that's good defensive work to just force her a little bit wide and away from the goal for now now Goff still with the ball at her feet she's a lot of the time been up there on her own at the moment there's Goff not like the Japanese where they've not been afraid to sort of 
Pass the ball off the sideboards. It's very much give it to Goff and hope for the best, it feels like, for England. Here she is, Goff. Maybe there is magic here. Good challenge by Colson, the last touch. And he's off Goff and out of play. It goes for a goal kick. They just nullified her in every single sense at the moment. When she gets close, the England coaching staff think this could be the moment. This could be the one where she finds a way through, but just isn't going for her at the moment. And you've got to credit Sweden and really give them the highest amount of praise possible because they really are stopping her. She's getting it inside the penalty area. But yeah, Moa bared her in the Sweden goal. Barring only really one occasion. Has only had that save to make. Has done very little else since in terms of stopping Samantha Goffers. At least Bertson is not allowing Vucia Vervantovic to get away from her. Vervantovic on the floor gets back up just a few seconds after she was knocked down. Bertson battling with Vervantovic. Colson and Lee, her teammates with her. Again, the ball is stationary. I'm trying to work it out. It's happened a few times where the ball is stationary, so they just. Needs someone to get in touch with it. Vervantovic for England is the one to touch it. She's gone up to the eight metre spot here. Just goes behind her into the penalty area. She goes right side of it. Closed down by Lisa Lee. Who will then left footy clear it away forward. Ball is spinning at a slow pace. Vervantovic looking for it. Tony Larkin, as you can hear, is just telling her where to go. Because it's in the attacking half of the pitch, he is allowed to speak to the England players and he was just telling Vervantovic where the ball was located and certainly did help her out. Lee goes down, no shove from Vervantovic. Of course they are quite lenient with these sort of fouls. Vervantovic now to Goff, this surely is the moment! And she's unable to really register that shot on goal. She had no Sweden player around her, you might have thought that was going to be it. That was going to be the moment that it was going to be England's first goal in this tournament but Moa Berhe got at the feet of Samantha Goff and just did not allow her to get the shot away but it could be a chance here for Sweden nonetheless with the number seven Tillin but she again really is unable to get that strike away as Katie Christopher dives at her feet well that would have been a real sucker punch and a not back for England if Samantha Goff who just couldn't quite at the last moment get her shot away and then we're just in just a few seconds would have seen Sweden perhaps take the lead with Helena Tillin who was inside the England penalty area she was inside Katie Christopher's box and the England goalkeeper was to come to the rescue and not allow her to shoot out now to Samantha Goff both sides going for it right at the end of this first half Goff right hand side of the penalty area comes off her left foot and goes out to play for a goal kick but it is reassuring. She's getting herself into some really good positions. Whether they're acute angles or she's in real good positions staring at the keeper. To be in those positions in the first place is really good. It's just not really been able to just have that sort of luck or the opportunity that she desires with the sort of shot that she wants. As Natasha Mee just shields that out of play and lets it go up for a goal kick as Katie Christopher's. With those white gloves of hers, the right hand of it. Throws it up towards Samantha Goff. Well, it's been a tight contest. Very much a 50-50 contest. But it is goalless here between England and Sweden. The final 15 minutes of the group stage for both. England have been a real danger, in particular with Samantha Goff. Sweden at times have nullified her well. There has been a few moments she's escaped their notice. But it's been a combination of not being able to get her shot away or... Just when she has had the shot, the goalkeeper Moa Berhe has denied her. And for Sweden, they've hung in there. They've been in this tournament, a very defensive first kind of side, dogged and resolute and tough to play against. And that has been the case here in the game against England, following on from the games against sort of Morocco and Japan in the previous two. Not a lot has happened in that first half, which has been very, very clear and evident been very tight very tense in a game that matters for both remember as I said it is a case of winner takes all in this game between Sweden and England nil nil though it is at the break here in a windy 
Birmingham. It is half time. It is England nil, Sweden nil. As we're going to get a message from Ipsa, and of course give you a little guide to blind football and the rules around it. Half time though, here at the University of Birmingham, England nil, Sweden nil. It's fast, technical, and tense. This is your guide to five-a-side football. There are five players per team, four outfield players and a goalkeeper. The aim of the sport is to score a goal by kicking the ball into your opponent's goal, and at the end of the game, whoever scored the most wins. Players must wear eye shades to ensure that all players have the same level of vision. That is apart from the goalkeepers, who aren't required to wear eye shades and can be fully sighted. Their job is to keep the ball from going in the goal behind them. But how do the players on the field know where the ball, or indeed the goal, is? Well, the ball in blind football is specially designed to make sound whenever it moves. Also, each team has a guide behind the opposition goal to help direct them. Each player is required to shout VOI when going for the ball. This ensures every player has the cues they need to help build a picture of what's going on and what to do next in defence or attack. To help this, total silence is required from the crowd until a goal goes in. Boy is Spanish for go, and it was the Spanish who were credited with originally developing blind football in the 1920s. As well as the Paralympics, teams from all corners of the world can compete at World, European, Asian, African and America's championships, as well as a World Grand Prix. Blind football can be played by both men and women, with the historic first Women's World Championships coming up in 2023. So what are you waiting for? Give it a try. IBSA International Blind Sports Federation presents, with the support of the International Paralympic Committee, IBSA Anti-Doping App, the first application of its kind in the Paralympic movement, specifically designed for blind and visually impaired people. Athletes, coaches, medical staff, managers, and the public in general now have a powerful tool to stay focused on the principles of clean sport. Scrolling down the main menu, you can find all the important themes you need to know to play fair and be alert to testing procedures and necessary adaptations for athletes with visual impairments. IBSA gives top priority to anti-doping control, being the only international federation with three sports in the Paralympic family, goalball, football and judo. IBSA anti-doping app has external links, namely to WADA, where our sport agents can always find the most updated information, especially the list of prohibited substances and methods. Glory in sport can only be achieved by the athlete's awareness of their rights and responsibilities. You can find them on the IBSA anti-doping app. IBSA is continuously promoting anti-doping education to all its affiliate athletes and sport agents, not only about the consequences of the use of doping, and the risk of using supplements. IBSA believes that education is the major tool to fight doping in sport. Informed athletes can make better decisions. Download the app now at the usual operating system stores. And ladies and gentlemen, we have seen history being made today. Such a great team at these championships. IBSA, beyond sight, feel the sport.
Second half is about to start here as it is England nil, Sweden nil. England were out just before the sort of minute in Sweden were for the start of this second half and on the pitch England left to right sort of the lighter blue shirts lighter blue shorts navy blue socks Sweden in all yellow black writing on the back of the numbers on their shirts England of course have the names and numbers in white so there is that luxury for myself to help me with my identifying of the players also Sweden of course it is only just the numbers there, as I will reveal the two sides at the start of this second half very, very shortly. It does look like as though there is no changes been made by England or by Sweden, so it is as you were for the end of the first half. It is goalless between England and Sweden in a game that is big for deciding who finishes second, third and fourth in Group A. We know who's topping Japan. If Sweden draw their second, Morocco will be third if it stays like this. England will be bottom on two points and that all comes down of course to goal difference here's Lisa Lee 14 meter line inside her own half is where she is in the middle third she's coming up now to the halfway line it's a positive run this she's trying to play it forward towards the number five Alice Bertson who is tussling with Vucia Virvantovic over now on the far side board she's battling away as Virovantovic, last touch is off a England player. Virovantovic got the last touch. It is a corner for Sweden. As soon as she heard that it was a Sweden kick, she was a bit annoyed by that. Was Virovantovic? She thought that the last touch may have come off at least bounce on, and it's the same two who've been taking all the corners in the first half for Sweden over there again. In Benson and Carlson. Benson trying to play it through. It's gone off of Natasha Mead. The Advantovic trying to clear. She's on the edge of her own penalty area. She's running to Carlson now, who hits it forward and then just goes on through into Katie Christopher's area. And she just sort of tells Selena Prieto to get out of the way and push up. And she then throws it out looking for. Samantha Goff just quickly there no change at the break England line up like this Katie Christopher's in goal Selena Prieto number two is in the team alongside Natasha Mead number three Vucia Virvantovic number seven in there Samantha Goff number nine there as well Lisa Lee takes out two England players one being Prieto one being Virvantovic and it's so much so that the mask has gone off on one of the England players I don't think it's actually a mask I think you should say it's the yeah it's the sort of goal fix which goes over the sort of eye mask as it came off and Katie Christopher's gives it back to Prieto and she puts it back on Sweden then Moa Berhi is in goal and captain in the side number four Lisa Lee number five Alice Bertson they have then Victoria Carlson in the team and Sofia Bustrum is back on for the second half in place of Helena Tillin who has gone off so Boosterum who started the game in those orange and black Adidas trainers is on. She's been the defender who has kept Samantha Goff at bay in that first half at times. We are two and a half minutes old. It is England nil, Sweden nil here in England's second city as they both fight for second place in Group A and finishing behind Japan in the first of the two groups here in the women's tournament group B of course concludes tomorrow shot by Benson not a clean one she's in the penalty area here's a chance for her she's just about got a Barons on the ball and she's just trying to bundle it in it's Hen Katie Christopher's in the goal near enough but she's managed to hold on to it stay strong and now throw it out towards Samantha Goff who I'm going to try and get on the end of the ball as she does she got under control with the right foot hits it against her inside left leg it's going to play for a goal kick. Still, we have no goals. Remember, of course, the way the draw works in the women's side of it is, of course, whoever finishes second in Group A plays the top of Group B and so forth. So it would be, as it stands, Sweden against Argentina. With Japan taking on team in second in group B is Virovantovic 
Goes and collides with Samantha Goff. Mirvantovic has come off worse in that sense and she's holding the left side of her face. Goff gets up like nothing happened but certainly can't say the same for Vucia Virvantovic. She's doing okay now. They can easily make a change. They have got Ayman Hafiz, Alice Hopkins and Emma Stead, the outfielders on the bench. Megan Briley is on the bench for England and for Sweden they've got two subs. Helena Tallinn and Anna Nilsson who is on the bench for the Swedes. It was the only Scandinavian representative in the women's side of the draw. Here is Carlson, wins it off of Samantha Goff. She's defensively quite a strong person is Carlson. Here's now Goff, it's a great run here inside the penalty area. And it's a swing that sees her miss the ball. She gets a clap from the England fans. Well, she got herself into a nice position. She ran through again. Happened a lot in this game. Is it for Samantha Goff where she's got into some nice positions, but she just cannot get that final shot right. She does the hard part, and then it comes to the easy part, and she just can't quite get that right. She started the run in the centre circle. She danced through past Colson. Lisa Lee through the gap and there was no Sophia Boosterham to stop her like there was a couple of times in the first half and ultimately it would just go through to Moa there he in the Sweden goal in that pink shirt white shorts white socks the Sweden captain there is now Goff she's trying to take the ball by the horns in terms of this game she gets the shot away through the legs of Lisa Lee Nearly swung so much though, she actually nearly caught Lisa Lee in the mid drift, but goes all the way through to Moa Berhe. Trying to get it under control and trap it was Victoria Carlson, who's running on the far side board, running alongside it. England restart. Christopher's looking for golf. She's around it and gets on the end of the ball. Sweden planning a change. As soon as the ball is stone dead, here is now Goff. Coming up towards the 8-metre spot. She's away from their left-hand side of the penalty area. Hits it right foot and hits it wide. If she went to the keeper's left. She would have had a lot more of the goal to aim for, but she hit it on instinct, hit it first time and hits it wide. Oh, Samantha Goff. That is literally it for England's attack and outlay. And blueprint. But it was one that she hit wide. As Sweden will make a change as Victoria Carlson will go off. Going on will be back onto the field of play. Helena Tillin. Of course, she did play some part in the first half where she came on as a sub and maybe coming on for the second half, just five minutes into it. Roll on roll off subs. As the sunshine is now out, starting to get a little bit warmer here in Birmingham. Has taken its time to come out. It's been a little bit windy, a little bit. There's been a little bit of a gentle breeze. Not quite enough to put a coat on and whatnot. Still, t shirt weather. Christopher is inside a penalty area, but Tillene was very close to her. And of course, Christopher wasn't quite happy, was a little bit frustrated that Tillene was just not getting away from her. And he just gave her a little shove. It is a England free kick. Tillene didn't quite understand that message, I don't think. Or was it might have just been a, an attempt of gamesmanship just to try and stop England trying to take this free kick, which they've got right on the halfway line. Yervantovic behind Goff. Rieto and Mead, the other two England outfielders, back inside their own half. So we might just see Goff dribble with this and maybe Yervantovic here away from her and make a run either side of her just to see how they approach this here England it is Goff, Ivrantovic will just stay back inside her own half, Goff will look to do it all on her own, she's gone over to the left side Benson with the challenge hasn't got enough legs to go quite out for a corner kick, Benson will 
face forward and try and carry it out of her own penalty area, which she's done. She gets a little touch to it. Over on the left-hand side, coming in from the far side board is now Goff. She's eight metres out, ball at her feet. She's batting it away with Lisa Lee. Into the penalty area she goes. She's trying to get a shot away on the left-hand side of it. Ball is stationary. Foot goes in by well, he's bent on and she may look to just send this clear or dribble it out. She is trying to clear it. There is a little deflection off of Samantha Goff. Of course, the ball is just inside the attacking third, so the guy, Tony Larkin, can give up the instructions to as and where the ball is. It has been stationary and has stopped quite a lot in this game, so that is so difficult for a player to actually try and locate where the ball is, of course. As Goff has been sent into the boards by Bernson, but she shows her a clean pair of heels. She's away from her. She can't quite get away from Lisa Lee. It's a very good tackle. Referee emphasising the ball was won, despite Goff being sent flying and hitting the turf pretty hard on the left side. Lee turns away from Goff and does very, very well. Very good skill, very good play. She could go to her right to Tallinn, or she may go it alone here. He will just knock it right to Tallinn. A little bit away from her, not quite at her feet, but Tallinn will see it bounce off the board and land at her feet. Prieto competing. Tallinn is away from her. She's coming up to the halfway line now. Back inside her own half, plays the pass. Can't find Boostrum. Looks as though there is a... My mask or something come off on the... Facial features. Here's now Goff. Wide it goes. Finally, she was able to get a clean effort on goal. She just hit it across her as it went wide of Marwa Berhi's goal. And as a timeout has been instructed here for this second half with just under eight minutes to play. Well, certainly what is very clear and what is very obvious is. If England are going to score in this tournament, it's going to be Samantha Goff. And no doubt she's got to be in her bonnet because obviously it was her missed penalty in the game against Morocco that meant they didn't win 1-0 but drew 0-0. Of course, for Sweden, they have had the sort of luxury of scoring and can say they've done that rather than England, but have done it from a Morocco player and not one of their own. As we see the replay again of England's Best chance of the second half, or one of them anyway, as Goff was running through. The real feature here has been England's number nine. Basically, it feels like doing it on her own. She was inside the penalty area. She had that shot there, left side of it. Hit it right-footed wide of the goal. And then, of course, she's had the opportunities again. She's been on her own inside the Sweden half. It's almost... Well, she's taken on the whole team and that was the closest effort she had the third of the sort of highlights where she was inside the Sweden penalty area did get a shot off and it went wide of Moa Berhi's goal there's Helena Tillin is off been on the pitch a couple of minutes and uh, she's been replaced as Victoria Carlson comes on Connor to add as well. Now the Birmingham clock is in the distance. Coming up to 20 past 11 in the morning here in England's second city. Right through skyline. Here as well. Certainly the sun not quite beating down on the pitch on the 4G here. No sunlight and nothing like that at all here. In Birmingham hopefully that may change as we go through the day. There he with the throw. Don't quite find Ali Spenson who's up there and we'll go through to Katie Christopher's in the England goal. The throw is looking for Goff. He has found Goff though, but off a Sweden foot, which the ball came off her right foot and went behind her. Goff battling with Carlson. The England number nine gets the better of the Sweden number nine. England captain Goff looking to just be that source of inspiration. Remember, England win, they get second. Sweden draw, second's theirs. England, of course, at the moment have the worst goal difference of any side in Group A. Here's now Ali's Benson. Shot comes in and wide it goes. 
Referee is stopping the game and it's as though that it's because I think it was the sort of calling of the England guy Tony Larkin there that might have just got a bit annoyed there and stopping that decision because they are allowed to call in certain areas are the guides it's when it's in their zone or in their half but they didn't think it was deemed that worthy so it will be a Sweden free kick Carlson there, Bouncing there as well. <laughs> Referee having a word with two England players, Prieto and Virvantovic over there, having a word as well with Carlson and Bouncing. There's an England ball. The uh, sort of confusion. Nil nil, nil nil on the fouls count. Close fault contest. Both sides working two for nil to get a win from. There's been a game back in in. Fair bit of quality. All that change with just under seven to play. Carlson now for Sweden. He just came on a few moments ago for Helena Tillin. Over the halfway line is Victoria Carlson. Not afraid to put her body in and lean in is Natasha Mead, who's done well to win it. But Carlson, though, such a battling player, isn't she? When she does lose the ball, there's such a willingness from her to try and win it back. Been a Real sort of attribute of a game that I've noticed over the last few days, and of course they are a very defensive-minded side. Our Sweden coach, of course, by Mark Blake, takes one of the sort of bits of eye equipment off of Natasha Mead, who will see the come on, come back onto a mask. It's the little golfic sort of band that will of course always sort of goes over the top of it and they sort of white tape that goes to cover their eyes then they put the black mask on then there is the sort of little goal fix sort of the band that goes on the eye mask as well and of course you can feel the atmosphere being very tight and very tense Usually it's obviously quite quiet. Never going to be a raucous atmosphere because it does affect the players as they've got to hear the sound of the ball, but it almost feels like an atmosphere you'd kind of hear, sort of like the Crucible and the snooker and the World Championships. This is a big deal, this, for Sweden and England. England, now they've got to at least try and attack and really put a few more options going forward because... They need to win. Sweden don't need to win. As Natasha Mee just with her left foot hits the ball against the sideboard. She is in possession. With time, no one around her. Colson just creeping up to her and closing the space down for her. There's a nice pass. Gets a round of applause from Michelle Wilcock, the England coach. As right in front of her receiving it is Vucia Virvantovic. Just over the halfway line. Goff. Moving out of the way. Vidvantovic just looking like she might have gone into her there. Goff staying close to her. Lisa Lee just biting and nibbling away at her. The Sweden number four's come away with it. She's going to just try and jog into the penalty area. But it will go through to Katie Christophers who will gobble up the ball inside her box. Two-handed overhead throw. Almost like a throw when it's off the pitch in regular football. Now towards Samantha Goff, goes on, in the penalty area, gets the shot away. More bad here with the save. Here's the rebound and the second ball going to be won by England. No, it will not. It will be Sweden who will come away with it with Victoria Carlsen. Virvantovic there to swarm round her and get it off of her. She's away from her in the shaded areas. We now see sunlight taking over sort of 95% of the pitch here in Birmingham. 
Here's now Goff, just coming inside her own half. Turns, facing forward, facing now the goal. She's on the halfway line. Surely she's been wrapped around by Carlson. She towed a fine line there, did Victoria Carlson? Never afraid to stick to her opponents, is she? And stick to Tass. Here's Goff. Surely she was clipped by Lisa Lee. She was. Foul on the England captain. The first foul Sweden have committed in this second half. And it's an England free kick about 10 metres out here. And what a chance this represents for England. With just over three and a half minutes left of this game remaining. Well, as you get closer to goal, no doubt there is that belief that you might feel like your day might be in to have a shot on goal. As England have called for a timeout amongst the coaching staff. And when they do come back, Sweden have got this free kick to defenders. You can see uh, England St George's flag attached to the railings towards the back of the seating area in the stands. There's even a Japanese flag there staying there. Of course, the men play later. The women played earlier on today with a convincing victory over Morocco. Winning by four goals to nil. As the Sweden players get the drinks on board. Not quite as warm or as sultry as what it was yesterday, but they have been doing a lot of chasing and a lot of work in closing England down, no doubt there. Will be a lot of sweat sort of coming off the head to the Sweden players. As we take a look at the action, some of it anyway. In the second half, Samantha Goff is going to be featuring quite heavily in this little section here. That opportunity where she managed to get it on her right foot inside the Sweden penalty area. She hit it wide of Moabert, he's goal. She would go close again. And she was inside the penalty area. She had that right-footed shot on target this time. Moabert, he though, down low. Smothering her to keep her at bay. As England have got themselves at kick in a nice position Tony Larkin the guide just getting Samantha Goff into position where the free kick is it is around about sort of nine meters out or so this free kick Lucia Virvantovic is also there as well all the Sweden outfielders in the wall behind her is the goalkeeper Moa Berhi Just trying to get her wall right and how she wants it to be. Of course, Tony Larkin now will in his zone hit the post to emphasize where it is for them to aim for. Sweden players in the wall. More bad heat. Closing off the near post so she won't get beat there. She's in a sort of squatted position, staring down low at the pitch. But Ivanovic to Goff. Comes to the 14 meter line. Gets away from Bernson. It's good footwork this by Goff. Trying to get the shot away. But she just sees the. Number nine, Victor Carlson, standing in her way and unable to get past her and get the shot away. Here is now Carlson on the ball for Sweden. She is able to get her foot to it, trying to keep it moving, trying to flick it through. Nina Prieto will see the ball come off her left side. Under three minutes for England to find a goal. Otherwise, they will be finishing bottom of Group A. As it stands at the moment, Japan, top of the group on nine. Three games played, three wins. As the referee spotted a free kick and an infringement. He will go Sweden's way. As the 
ball will drop down. But as I was mentioning, Japan, nine points, top of the group. They've absolutely walked Group A. Second will be Sweden on two points with a minus one goal difference. Morocco will be third on two points and a minus four goal difference. And we will have England bottom, minus five and on two points. So second, third and fourth has been separated by goal difference. As it will be a Sweden free kick right on the near sideboard. Carlson pretty much backing into it. In front of Rosalie Spenson. As Lean Rio, the Sweden guide, is on the posts. Certainly for the guides, they've had to just had a watching brief so far. This is the first time, to my, to my knowledge, that they are tapping at the post and the officials off the side of the pitch warning Tony Larkin again to not give out instructions because, of course, he's not in his zone. The shot comes in, deflects off the England wall, goes out for a Sweden corner. Of course, so only three people in certain areas can give out instructions, remember, on the pitch in blind football. In certain areas guide the person in the middle of the pitch can and the one in the defensive third as well the goalkeeper will do that one end of the pitch then up the pitch halfway it will be the coach and then the guide and the attacking third can do so so hence why of course Tony Larkin is being warned by the officials on a couple of occasions Sweden have taken the kick short on the near side Benson trying to go for goal Bit of an air shot from the number five. She's over the line and it will be a goal kick for England. Well, it looks as though it's actually gone for a corner. England were adamant it wasn't a goal kick. They were preparing to just sort of push out and spread out for their restart. But it is a Sweden corner kick. As it is they who are having the territory at the moment. Corner taken short. Here's Bernson. Vidovantovic closing her down. Ball is moving around in the penalty area. There's Carlson. What a chance this could be. She doesn't really get a hold of the shot. As there to pick it up is Katie Christophers and throws it out behind her head towards Samantha Goff. Carlson pulling on her. Uh, has been spotted by the officials and it will be a England free kick. They do signal that there was a push and certainly a little pull on Samantha Goff as well. It's the official coming in from the far side. A good 10 metres or so from there is just shaking the ball and then dropping it down as England have got themselves a free kick. The sun beats down here in the second city. Oh, bad heat. Certainly has done it. It feels like a lot more organising of her wall than she has had, to, had saves to make. Probably the same for Casey Christophers as well. And just over two minutes to play. So the last two minutes to determine where you're going to finish in the Group A table. Surely Goff was blocked off. It's another England free kick. So they've gained a few yards. They went from the right side to the left side in quite a central position. As it's a third foul of the half given away by Sweden. And as it stands in this group, Sweden will finish second behind Japan. Morocco will be third on two points. England will be bottom on two points. Sweden with a minus one goal difference. Morocco minus four. And, Sweden and England on minus five. But top of the tree of Japan and how they have just walked through this Group A with minimal fuss. There's only three in the actual Sweden wall. Sofia Bustrom is behind the three-player wall. She's in between the keeper and the wall. Goff will take it. 
Yedivantovic was looking for it, but Goff may go it alone here. But she sees Lisa Lee in her way. She's in the penalty area, is Goff. Ball is moving around in there. They hold her off. Benson in front of her, Lee behind her. Goff now trying to win it and trying to get the ball inside the Sweden penalty area. Sweden trying to clear it and kick it away to make sure that doesn't happen. Lee does well. She goes down. She gets back up and is able to have her sort of face band in her hand. She was going to put it on, but she realised Samantha the Goff, the opposition had the ball and she's just still got it in her hand as she still goes on here. She's running through the middle. Prieto has got to adjust herself, try and get there. She's missed it. It's a long run this by Benson and gets the shot away. And she hits it wide. Well, she was just steadily going towards Katie Christopher's goal. It did take a little nick on the way through as it has led to a Sweden corner with 70 seconds remaining on the clock. There's... She was... Running on through. It looked like she was going to finish off what she started, but she couldn't quite do it as Sweden have got themselves a corner. They have had quite a few corners in this match. Have the Swedes. Certainly, it's been a case of steady Sweden this game and this tournament for them. Not been the most easy on the eye to watch, but they've certainly... And able to just stick to their game plan and stick to what they're good at. As the corner comes to nothing, Christopher throws it out to Goff. She's just been forced a little bit wide by Lisa Lee, who is so, so tight to her. Goff goes down under no challenge at all from any yellow shirt. She gets back up, has the ball inside the penalty area, gets the shot away. Is that a shot off the Sweden player? Down is for Sweden, Sofia Bustrum. He does get back up. She is just inside the Sweden goalkeeper zone where Moa Berhi is. Referee is also there as well. Just sticking her left arm in the air. I think we're just sort of trying to adjust her eye protection. So it does look as though there is a goal kick for Sweden as Goff shot didn't take a touch out of play on the way through it's amazing to think second third and fourth is going to be separated by goal difference usually only two sides are sort of involved in that equation not usually three but it has happened here as Christopher throws it out nothing came of it from the Sweden throw from the keeper Moaberhi here's now Goff there's 30 seconds plus left that remain Nothing going to come of it though for England as Goff has lost out. Here's now Lisa Lee. Are they going to go and finish second by winning this game? Lee going through. He just tried to just sort of stampede away through as it's gone through to Katie Christopher. Thrown out towards now Samantha Goff. Down she goes. A good clean challenge by Carlson. As it's just not coming off for Goff. Everything she tries at the moment. Sweden seems to have the answer and there is the whistle. Sweden celebrate. Second place is theirs. They finish behind Japan. England will be fourth. Morocco will be third. It's a brilliant display at the back from Sweden that has led to them finishing in second place. Leapfrogging Morocco and going into second place behind the Japanese, who, of course, had a perfect record of three wins out of three. They celebrate and revel in delight. The game plan has been perfect for Sweden. They knew coming into this, they got a draw they would take second place and that is exactly what has happened as they are into the semi-finals there is sheer delight for the Swedish coaching staff England gave it their all Samantha Goff pretty much had all the expectation to score on her shoulders as there does seem to be some real celebrations potentially brewing on the pitch from the Sweden point of view as they have got the job done and second place is theirs. Morocco and England settle for third and fourth. As Sweden have managed to get the result they wanted. It's finished here in the University of Birmingham. Group A wrapped up. Sweden takes second. England finished bottom of the pile on two points and in fourth. Sweden on two points as well, but goal difference has sent them into second. 
behind Japan. They will be in the semi-finals playing the winners of Group B. It is finished here, goalless between England and Sweden.